Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Jana, and I'm going to be the moderator. Um, I wanted to point out a couple features of the GoToWebinar. In the GoToWebinar panel, there is a questions box. So if you have questions throughout, um, please go ahead and chat those our way, and Dr. McMillan will address those at the end. Um, he'll also go into some frequently asked questions as well today, too. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jake McMillan. Hi. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, you know, this is just an opportunity to take a few minutes and run through some frequently asked questions. You know, we talk to patients all day long, one at a time, but it's kind of nice to be able to get together as a group uh, and, and sort of answer questions and kind of run through the common questions I get in clinic, uh, do a little education here, and hopefully it helps you be more informed about uh, your vision and, and, you know, maybe the right things for you. and um, help you decide if there's something that you want to do about your vision or if you're a good candidate for vision correction. So um, I am an ophthalmologist at, at Campbell Cunningham Laser Center, uh, fellowship trained in refractive surgery, cataract surgery, and kind of vision corrective surgeries. It whole, encompasses a whole uh, realm of surgeries, but I've got some fellowship training in that, and so it's really my kind of primary area of interest and what I really enjoy doing. I work with a great lady named Rebecca Dotson, uh, and if you interact with our practice on the laser center side, you will meet her, and she just runs a really tight ship and helps us all, all, all just kind of stay on pace and taking care of lots of people. So if you have questions uh, about any of this, she's the best contact to reach out to. You can email her, you can leave her a message on her voicemail, and, um, and she can be really helpful at just getting things set up if you want to come in to see us. So just to start off. Um, our Laser Center website has a couple features um, that can be helpful. If you kind of look up here around the, that green circle, if you want to schedule a consultation at some point in time or just a phone consultation or fill out a, you know, kind of a, a, a information sheet to kind of help decide if you're a candidate for a vision correction, this is where you would do it. It's a cclcis.com um, and you'll see that again later. So. The first thing to, to know about vision correction surgery is that, you know, we all hear the word LASIK and we think about vision correction, but LASIK is just one of many ways to correct your vision. So just like, you know, Kleenex refers to, a, you know, a whole category of, uh, of tissues, LASIK is just sort of one category of how we correct your vision. So there's LASIK uh, and that's a great, that's probably one of the most common procedures performed and that's a great option for folks. There's PRK which is also a laser vision correction procedure without the flap. And you'll hear the word flap when we talk about LASIK. Another procedure called refractive lens exchange. This is often a, a good option for our patients that are um, in their, you know, late 40s, 50s, and they still haven't developed a cataract yet. So they still have uh, good vision, but they're requiring glasses, but maybe they're a little bit older than our average laser vision correction patient. And then for folks that aren't candidate for, for laser, but are maybe younger or have really high prescriptions, you know, very extreme prescriptions, or maybe have a, a, something unusual about their cornea, implantable columnar lenses are uh, lenses that can be implanted inside the eye to correct the vision. So there's really a whole toolbox of things, and these are the, kind of the most common ones that we can help you with, um, with laser options probably being the most common, but it's important to know that when we talk about vision correction, we're gonna use whatever procedure makes the most sense for you and is gonna give you the best outcome. So it's important just to sort of review what we're doing to the eye when we talk about LASIK and things. And so um, I'll pull my pointer here on the screen. This is just a cross section of an eyeball. And if you look at the front, this, this curved area is the cornea. The colored part is the is the iris, and then you've got your pupil, and then behind that is a lens. And so I describe the eye like a camera. The light has to come in through the cornea, go through the pupil and through the lens inside the eye, and then be focused onto the retina. The retina is like the film in the camera. Um, so all the work we're doing when we're talking about laser vision correction or vision correction, we're talking about getting your eye to focus light. If your eye's out of focus, you have to wear glasses, contacts, or have vision corrective surgery to get it at focus. All the laser options work on the cornea. That's the front part of the eye. The lens-based options work on the lens inside the eye. So depending on your age, depending on your prescription, you'll either need a cornea-based procedure or a lens-based procedure. Um, and we'll go through all that. 
Now, LASIK is an incredible procedure that um, involves creating a partial flap in the cornea and then using laser to reshape sort of the middle part of the cornea. And so this image is just giving you a really basic demonstration of, okay, there's this top layer. It looks almost like a contact lens. We create it with a laser. We lift it up kind of like the hood on a car. We apply laser treatment to reshape the cornea. And then we lay this back down and it heals in this perfect laser created bed um, like, a piece of, like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, and that's a really elegant way to correct the vision. Now, PRK is very, very similar. The only difference between PRK and LASIK is that in PRK, we do not create a flap. We basically create a small area of corneal abrasion uh, just on the surface, and then we laser the surface of the cornea. So that's the main difference technically. LASIK has a flap, PRK doesn't. It's the same laser, it's the same treatment that you would get with either one. It's all about the healing afterwards. LASIK and PRK both have an equivalent visual outcome. LASIK gets there faster. And so um, that all happens within the first week or so with LASIK. Now with PRK, it can take up to three months at times for the vision to fully settle. Now, most, potion, most patients will tell me that it's not three months for a good vision. Oftentimes our PRK patients are seeing better at a week, not as good as our LASIK patients, but at a month, they're getting pretty close to their final outcome. That's not the same for everybody. Some people get there faster with PRK. Some people, it can take a few months. There are certain reasons we'll go over why we would choose PRK over LASIK. LASIK patients typically are often seeing better the next day. By a week, they're seeing substantially better. But LASIK can fluctuate a little bit over the first few months. But in general, LASIK patients heal faster get to better vision faster. LASIK itself is a technically, a little bit uh, more technically complex procedure. So because we're making a flap and then we're doing the laser, there's really two distinct portions of the procedure. There's the flap making process, which includes a, a what's called a femtosecond laser. And then there is the reshaping portion, which is called an eczema laser. And so in LASIK, we have to use two, la two lasers for two different tasks. In PRK, we only use the eczema laser. So the surgery itself is a little bit easier for patients in the PRK. So occasionally we'll have patients and we'll choose PRK simply because the patient has a lot of anxiety around the procedure and they're maybe worried about lying still and things like that. And so PRK is, is a faster procedure, less discomfort during the procedure than LASIK. LASIK is not a painful procedure, but there can be moments of pressure and discomfort on the eye. I tell patients it's sort of like going to the dentist. You know, it's not something you want to do every day. There can be moments of discomfort, but it's not a not an overly painful experience. PRK is even less so. The difference between LASIK and PRK really becomes apparent during the post-operative time. Post-operatively, my LASIK patients will tell me that their eyes are gritty, sandy, and their eye burns and waters for about 12 hours or so. Usually they go home and they take a nap after surgery for four or five hours. And when they wake up, their eyes feel much more comfortable. Sort of feels like you've gotten some sand in your eye. Maybe spend a long day at the beach or something like that. PRK, for the first 48 hours, patients can have intermittent bouts of considerable pain. It can feel like you have, a, if you've ever had a corneal abrasion or a scratch on your eye, it can be um, fairly uncomfortable. It comes in waves, um, but it only lasts for about 48 hours. Um, and so the first two days I tell patients, you know, we, we typically do laser vision correction on Fridays. And so the PRK patients will tell me about noon on Sunday, I really felt a lot better. Um, whereas the LASIK patients will tell me after I went home and slept for four or five hours, my eyes felt better. So there, there's that. The unique risk between the two procedures, people always want to ask about risk and ask me things. So in LASIK, there you can have problems with the flap. There can be wrinkles in the flap or a risk of infection under the flap. Although those, those risks are low, it is eye surgery and, and, and LASIK adds a little complexity to that. PRK, the risk is different. There's no flap. There's no concern for wrinkling a flap or displacing a flap, but you can, if you, if, if you heal in an abnormal fashion, you can get some haze in the cornea. 
That's very unusual to develop that, but if folks develop haze, it can take longer for them to recover, and sometimes they can feel like they've got, uh, you know, just a little bit of fuzziness in the vision from that. We do a lot of things differently now than we used to do 20 years ago, and we've limited haze to much, much less than 1% of patients. The unique benefit about LASIK is that it's a, a really speedy recovery. Uh, the patients typically have very little pain after the first 24 hours or so, um, and that's, that's why LASIK was developed. PRK was developed first, and LASIK was an improvement on PRK from a post-operative healing standpoint, a faster healing. Now, PRK um, is still an excellent procedure for a lot of people. About 20% of our patients, I'll recommend PRK for, for you know, various reasons. Um, you know, sometimes we recommend PRK because of the cornea, if the cornea is too thin um, or slightly irregular, or if the patient's nervous about it. Sometimes we'll recommend PRK for people who uh, play contact sports, professional athletes, people who are worried about the LASIK flap um, potentially being injured. So question I often get, how do I know if I'm a good candidate for LASIK or PRK? So the first thing that's really my job is to decide who shouldn't have laser vision correction. And so when I meet, uh, meet you as a patient and we're going through everything, I'm looking for reasons that maybe you shouldn't have laser vision correction. Um, and if we don't find any of those reasons, it means you're, you're probably a good candidate. So if you're having uh, changes in your glasses prescription, you say, well, every six months, my prescription is changing and it's changing substantially. Then, then we don't want to do a laser surgery until your prescription has settled. That's why we wait until patients are usually at least in their early 20s to, um, to talk about laser vision correction because kids' eyes change. If you have significant eye disease, there's uh, specific conditions and people usually know if they have them or not, things called keratoconus, uh, thin corneas, swelling of the corneas, history of corneal infections, especially from the herpes virus or the shingles virus. Um, or if they have um, a lot of scarring in the cornea, maybe from old con contact lens infections. Those things can be reasons why I might tell you it's not a good idea to have laser vision correction. Occasionally, people just have weird corneas. When we measure them, we look at the curvature. They have abnormal curvatures, and we know that folks with abnormally curved corneas don't respond well to laser vision correction. And so for those reasons, you might not be a candidate. If someone has rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, Crohn's disease, some sort of autoimmune condition that is untreated, or even if it's treated but it's severe, that can be a reason not to have laser vision correction because of because of un, um, uncontrolled healing or you know unpredictable healing. You know, one important thing is we talk about expectations. You know, what can we do for you? What is realistic and what is not? Occasionally, patients just have really unrealistic expectations about laser vision correction and what it can and can't do. And so um, we really talk a lot about what you expect and what I expect. And when our expectations are the same, the process is enjoyable. If patients have unrealistic expectations of, of what we can do for them or what their vision is going to be like, then that can create problems. And, and, and we'll try, if, the, if the expectations, if we can't get on the same page, then we don't do any sort of surgery. Uh, but as, but usually once we can have the conversation and our expectations will meet, then we can move forward. I say here less than 20 years old. That is pretty typical early 20s. You know, if a patient is really stable and they're 19 years old, we will occasionally consider it on a case by case basis. But in general, we like our patients to be very stable glasses prescriptions, at least in their early 20s. Patients that are pregnant or breastfeeding, uh, we do not do vision correction because you're correct. You're glasses prescription can change during that time, or patients with significant psychiatric disease. If someone has significant psychiatric disease, sometimes uh, just performing the procedure can be difficult, and sometimes afterwards changes in the vision can cause patients to have decompensation of their psychiatric disease. So we try to make sure that those things are all stable before moving forward. So question number two, you've decided, okay, you know, I think this is something I might want to do. Let's come in for a consultation and what does that entail? The first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a phone call 
if you have scheduled a consultation for laser vision correction. During that phone call, we're gonna do some screening questions and we're gonna ask you questions about your health. We're gonna ask you questions about your um, you know, previous uh, eye issues, what your, if you know your glasses prescription, maybe who your optometrist is, really trying to get a feel for you know, the basic things. And if there's certain things that come up, you like I have rheumatoid arthritis or I'm currently pregnant or something like that, then we'll, you know, basically, you know, prevent you from coming in for a consultation that might not be a, a good use of your time if we know ahead of time that you're you're not going to be a good candidate for various reasons. So that's just to save you some time, um, you know, and, and kind of screen folks out that may not be good candidates before they even come to see us. We're going to do a really detailed eye exam. This is going to be a more detailed eye exam that you've ever had in your life. You're going to have um, an optometrist that works with you that is going to measure your glasses prescription before and after dilation. We're going to measure your eye with two to three different diagnostic devices to map your corneas, to map the visual pathway so that we know exactly everything about your vision and how your eye is performing. We're then going to um, look at the retina and make sure that there's no other eye problems that have undiagnosed. You know, we've certainly diagnosed eye problems in folks um, that needed treatment. Uh, for instance, if a patient comes in and they have cataracts or they have macular degeneration or glaucoma or something that might rule them out. Um, and because we're attached as part of Campbell Cunningham, Taylor and Hahn, we're, you know, a large um, vision practice and we can take care of the, the medical problems if we discover those. So it's, it's it happens, you know, not uncommonly that a patient, I see a patient for LASIK and we end up, you know, treating them for medical eye disease. So we catch those things sometimes. Then you're going to speak with me or one of the other surgeons, and I'm going to go through all of your diagnostics in detail. We're going to sit in the room together. We're going to go through them. I'm going to show you the pictures. I'm going to talk about your cornea, and, and we're going to decide what's the best for you. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I recommend and what I would do on my own eye. Um, and that's usually, you know, kind of our, our measuring stick is this is what I would do if, it, if I was you. Um, and we can kind of go through what, what, would, what is best for you. The third question is what is surgery like? People always wanna know, does it hurt? Am I awake? What are all these things? And this image here is, is a patient uh, lying under the laser. And so that's, that's the shaping laser that she's lying under there. Um, and um, you see the laser suite. When you come in to, to, be, to have your eyes measured during your consult, you're gonna walk through the laser suite and you're gonna see these two lasers. So this laser on the left is the flap creating laser. This laser on the right is the reshaping laser. So we use this laser for both LASIK and PRK. And this laser we use in LASIK. So the bed pivots, so we work on the eyes here and then we work on them here and you lay in the same spot. We perform this in our office. We give you some relaxing medication by mouth just to relax you, not to make you fall asleep, and we give you topical numbing medication. The procedure lasts about 15 minutes, and we try to work fairly expeditiously to try to make the procedure as you know quick uh, for you and comfortable as possible. During the procedure, there's especially during LASIK, people will feel a lot of pressure on their eyes. There's moments of discomfort with the pressure, but they're very short-lived. Uh, and the vision is blurry during the procedure. People will often ask me mid-procedure, my vision's blurry, is that okay? And it's totally normal for the vision to be blurry. I expect it to be blurry during your procedure and it starts getting better afterwards. When we talk about laser vision correction, unfortunately, insurance companies really don't value uh, laser vision correction or any sort of elective vision corrective surgery. Uh, despite the fact that it has a hugely positive impact on folks' life and um, getting out of, of strong power glasses is obviously a big deal for, for folks. Insurance companies group it with cosmetic procedures. They consider it an elective thing because glasses and contacts are able to correct your vision. There is financing available and you, you know we can talk about that if you need that, um, that is an option. Question five, will I need glasses after surgery? Obviously, people are coming to us because they don't want to wear glasses. In some instances, you might still need glasses after surgery. So if you're over the age of 45, if you're already using a bifocal, then you will have, if we have, if we do standard LASIK surgery, giving you good distance vision, 
you're going to need something to help you read. If you're in a bifocal, we can't change the fact that you've already lost your near vision as you've gotten a little bit older. There is a strategy called monovision, and many patients are familiar with that, where one eye is, is set for up close for reading and one eye is set for far away. Patients that already do that in contact lenses are a really good option. If you're already in bifocals or have reduced near vision when I meet you, I'm going to recommend that we at least try monovision. Um, we will put you in a contact lens and let you try it for a few days. If you wear contact lenses, we'll send you home with some trials to try it. If you don't wear contact lenses, we might even put a contact lens on your eye, let you go home for a couple of days, and then you can come back when we take it out. But we want you to try that option typically. Occasionally, we'll treat patients and they'll have an under or over response to the treatment. What that means is that their vision is much better, but it's not as sharp as they were hoping after the procedure. In that instance, we'll occasionally prescribe a pair of glasses for a short period of time until we can do a second laser enhancement to get their vision where we want it to be. The main reason why people wear glasses after, after laser vision correction is that they wanna wear sunglasses and they pick them up off the shelf. And that's really fun for a lot of people who've never been able to wear off the shelf sunglasses. Um, and so that's the main reason why you probably want glasses. If this is a little bit of a reiteration. So I'm already wearing glasses or bifocals can I have laser vision correction? So it, it, the answer is yes. And, and when you're in your 20s and 30s, we're, we're not even really gonna talk about, you know, your reading vision other than the fact that you want it to be clear. If you come see me and you're in your 40s and 50s and, we're, and you're already using some sort of help with reading, this is gonna be a really large part of our discussion. We're gonna talk a lot about your reading vision and whether monovision is good for you. Question seven, does laser vision correction wear off? So I, I hear this from time to time and patients will come to see me and they'll say, I just wanted to check up because I think my LASIK is wearing off. Yes, your vision can change over time. However, it's usually not because your LASIK is wearing off. When we talked earlier about the cornea and we're changing the cornea, typically the reason people's vision changes is because the internal lens inside the eye is aging. The cornea, once it's been reshaped, it typically stays the same. So if you had LASIK in your 20s and then you're in your 40s and all of a sudden you're needing glasses again, it's because your eye is going through a normal aging process. And oftentimes we can find a other problem like a cataract or dry eyes or something that can be treated that can help get the vision back. It's not very common for the cornea itself where the laser vision treatment was applied to change. Uh, it can, but it's really not common. Usually there's another reason, and oftentimes it's changes to the internal lens in the eye that cause people's vision to feel like it's changing. How long after surgery will it be before I can see? So again, it depends on the procedure. With LASIK, sometimes patients are starting to see better, you know, 20 to 30 minutes after they leave the office. With LASIK, patients are usually seeing better one day after surgery. I do ask patients to still have somebody bring them to their one-day post-op appointment because the vision can fluctuate, but it's usually quite a bit better one day after surgery. With PRK, the vision is usually better the next day, but it fluctuates a lot more over the, few, over the coming weeks. And usually at three to four weeks after surgery, people feel like PRK patients are really settling in. It takes a few more weeks than, than, than LASIK. However, I have patients that have had LASIK or PRK and they're doing well at a month, but they'll come back three months later and say, you know, my vision continued to get better the longer it's been since the surgery. And often it's because maybe their eyes were a little bit dry after surgery or something like that. And that just improved. So you just had surgery. What can I do after surgery? I ask that you go home and you just take it easy the day after surgery. We give you a relaxing medication during the surgery and we give you one more to take home. We ask that when you get home, you take that medication, you close your eyes and you go to sleep for four or five hours. The best Band-Aid for your eyes is the back of your eyelids. Most folks feel significantly better after that long nap. And with LASIK, most folks can return to vision or return to work on Monday. If we do LASIK for you on Friday, you can return to work on Monday. With PRK, I usually advise folks take about a week off of work. It's just more comfortable. I have patients that will go back to work after PRK that first week, 
but their eyes get tired faster and sometimes they can have some burning and things. And it's just really nice to have, you know, at least a few extra days off of work. Um, and so um, just depending on your work it, it, and how much computer time you do and what you're doing might depend on whether you go back to work right away if you had PRK. We do ask that you stay out of hot tubs, swimming pools, rivers, lakes, all of these things for the first two weeks. We just don't want your eye going underwater. We really don't want the risk of infection and we don't want you using eye makeup for a week. Um, for two reasons. One, because makeup can be, you know, um, have bacteria in it and that can be a risk of infection. Also, just the applicators, the mascara brushes and things, we, we don't want you to accidentally poke yourself in the eye. And then really just don't want you to touch your eyes. We really don't want you to rub your eyes, especially the first few weeks. Um, and, and even beyond that, we ask that you truly really try to avoid doing that. So what if I'm not a laser candidate? So we spent this whole time talking about LASIK and PRK, you know, what are the differences? Um, they're both great procedures. LASIK and PRK are great, and it's just knowing which procedure is right for the right person. And that's where we come in, and we'll give you advice on to what we think we would do for you. And, and usually, it's, usually there's not much of a, a choice. Uh, usually I'll, I'll tell you, I'll say, you know, with your eye, we should do PRK or, or nothing else. I don't think LASIK is a good idea. Or you're a good LASIK candidate and occasionally patients will say, well, you know, I actually do martial arts or, um, you know, I'm a professional football player. I would prefer PRK because we talked about safe, you know, the, the flap and maybe it's a little safer if I were to get hit in the eye really hard. So sometimes we'll do that. But if none of those are options, um, you still have options. If you are a little older, older than 45, 50 years old, um, then we can talk about a refractive lens exchange, uh, which is somewhat similar to having cataract surgery. Um, it was done in the operating room when we do one eye at a time and patients do very well with that. The nice thing about a refractive lens exchange is that it lasts the rest of your life and you never develop a cataract. Whereas patients who have LASIK in their 20s will still develop cataracts in their 60s. The last option is an implantable columnar lens. We call this an ICL. You can think about this as like a contact lens that is placed inside the eye and it stays inside the eye until you reach your 60s when you have cataract surgery. At that time, 60s or 70s, at that time it's removed and the cataract is removed. That is a really good option for, for young patients that are not laser vision candidates. It's a little bit more invasive, it is more expensive, um, but it is a good option if you have a really high prescription and you're just not a laser vision candidate or you have a irregular cornea. So there are options out there and you just want to make sure that that you're kind of knowing all those options and that you have someone that can guide you through the process so that you get the option that, that you need and it's right for your eye because one procedure can be great for one patient but the same procedure can be not good for another patient and there's other options and so you want to make sure that we're evaluating every option and giving you the best one, the one that's right for you. So if you're if you're ready to talk more about vision correction, you know, we're happy to see you, happy to talk to you, happy to do a phone consultation. You know, we love this stuff. And treating folks, taking care of folks, vision problems and helping restore vision is such an absolute privilege and and just one of the great things in my life is getting to take care of patients and, and watching them go through this journey and and so you know if it's something you want to do something you're interested in feel free we're always here and working to take care of our community so uh, give us a call we'll be happy to happy to see you again this is rebecca this is her, her her phone number to the laser center if you call the main line there is an option uh, on the phone tree for uh, the laser center um, or you can email us at infolasic at cctis.com. This is again our website. So if you go to the website, it's got the phone number at the top and then it's got the um, the buttons there to to click and, and you can kind of go through um, and kind of go through the phone consultation process. So that's great. So if there's any questions, you know, I'll hang out here for a minute or two uh, before we get back to work for the afternoon and I'm happy to answer any of those things if you have if you have questions so hopefully that was helpful uh perfect there is actually a question that came in um i'm scheduled for a cataract surgery consultation malasic and prk also be discussed at this visit so if you're scheduled for a cataract consultation 
and someone has already diagnosed cataract, then mainly we'll be discussing cataract surgery because if you have a cataract, LASIK or PRK is not going to help you. So let's kind of go back here to the, um, let me just show you this one slide. If you have a cataract, and the cataract is the lens inside the eye turning cloudy. So if this lens is cloudy, we have to fix this lens with cataract surgery to give you clear vision. LASIK surgery happens here. We can, If we reshape the cornea with LASIK or PRK and you have a cataract, you're still not going to see well. So we don't talk a lot about LASIK or PRK during a cataract consult because it's really not helpful. Certainly we can answer questions and if you have questions uh, and things like that, we can talk about it. Um, but it's a little bit different, a little different animal when we're talking about cataract because cataract is really a medical problem. Patients really uh, can't see well when they have a cataract, even with glasses or contacts. And so LASIK or PRK won't help you in that situation. Um, now, occasionally after cataract surgery, if for some, if a patient um, has cataract surgery and, and they're still wearing glasses um, and they want to get out of glasses, occasionally we will do LASIK or PRK after a patient has had cataract surgery if they're still needing glasses. So that's that's the one time when a patient who has had cataract surgery, you might get LASIK or PRK. And those patients are, you know, you know, oftentimes in their 60s or 70s. Um, after cataract surgery. What about astigmatisms? Are there options? Right, so LASIK and PRK can both correct astigmatism and they actually do it very well. There is a limit and so one thing we didn't talk about was how much prescription can be treated. I didn't have a slide about that. With LASIK, typically patients that are nearsighted can be treated all the way up to somewhere in the range of nine to 10, a minus nine to minus 10 prescription, depending on the person. Um, astigmatism, depending on the amount, somewhere in the range of three to five diopters of astigmatism. So if you know your glasses prescription, it's a lot of astigmatism, three to five. So most patients have less than three, but we can correct astigmatism and the modern lasers do a very good job of correcting astigmatism. With PRK, the limit of correction is a little bit lower. We usually only treat patients up to about a minus six, um, and we can treat astigmatism with that as well. For far-sighted people, typically we can we can, can treat astigmatism with far-sightedness up to about a plus three prescription. And it just depends on the person and it depends on your measurements. And so that's part of the nitty-gritty of doing the consult and, and really evaluating your eye individually. Do you do the refractive lens exchange or is that a different department slash consult? So refractive lens exchange, typically what will happen is if you come in for a laser vision consult, we determine a refractive lens exchange is a good option. We will have you come back for a separate appointment to get a separate type of measurement. Um, and, and we will talk a little bit more. It's the same, it's the same practice, it's still the same surgeon, however, Usually when we decide refractive lens exchange, it's we've usually already dilated your eye and done a few things. So we do have to get one separate set of measurements. And we'll talk about, uh, you know, we'll, but we will talk about at that initial consult, if refractive lens exchange is right for you, we can even make the decision for that. We can talk about the risks. We can talk about the surgery. We can even get surgery scheduled. We just have to have you come back for an additional set of measurements of your eye for a lens implant. And are they able to have that consultation with you? Yes, absolutely. Perfect. With refractive lens exchange, do farsighted people still need readers? The answer is sometimes. There are many different types of lens lens implant options, uh, all the way from single focus lenses where patients still use reading glasses to trifocal lens implants where patients don't need reading glasses. We can also do monovision with the refractive lens exchange. And I would say monovision refractive lens exchange is probably the most common thing we end up doing. However, some patients will choose to do a trifocal lens implant, and that also gives, gives you the opportunity to see clearly without reading glasses. Um, there is some cost differences between the trifocal lens implants and the single focus, and we go through all that with you at the time of your, of your consult. 
Well, perfect. That looked like that was the last question. Thanks for attending, everyone. Uh, we will make this recording available. Uh, we'll send it out via email. So watch your email if you'd like to, to revisit this. And we hope to see you in the office for, office for a free consultation. Um, and or, or reach out to Rebecca. She's great, and she'll definitely help you um, learn more about good. LASIK. So. Everybody has a good afternoon, and thanks for your time. Thank you, everyone. Bye. <clears throat>